Today on our 2014 Ford Explorer, we're going to be installing the Takancha Prodigy P2 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90885. In addition to our brake controller, we're also going to need to install the Universal Installation Kit for Trailer Brake Controllers, part number ETBC7, as well as a no drill mounting bracket, part number 18140. Without a trailer connected, when you slide the manual override here, you'll get an NC showing that there's no trailer connected. Now we'll go ahead and plug a trailer in. With our trailer plugged in, you'll see now a C appears on the screen showing that you are connected. Now when you do the manual override, it shows you what the power output going to the electric trailer brakes is. Now this roller knob over here on the left hand side is what adjusts the maximum output or the output that can go back to your trailer brakes. This little button up here on the top right is the boost feature button, which applies how aggressive the power will come on to the trailer brakes. Now we're gonna begin with the ETBC7 portion of our installation. Now, the reason why you would need an ETBC7 is if your vehicle does not have any factory prep for a trailer brake package. That's what this kit does, and you will need to already have a four flat wiring harness on your vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and put the bracket together here off the vehicle. We'll go ahead and slide the bracket through the wires like this. We're then going to go ahead and attach it using the hardware provided. So we'll go ahead and drop a screw down in, put a locking nut on the back side. Do that at all four corners. Can then go ahead and tighten everything down. Now the next portion of our bracket that's gonna hold our plug in place is a short no drill bracket. So that'll attach something like this. So we'll be using the hardware that comes with the no drill bracket to attach that to the bracket that comes with the ETBC7 kit. Put the screw in and then we'll put a lock nut on the underside. Go ahead and tighten down the hardware again. Now you'll see here that our vehicle does already have a four flat wiring connection on it. We'll go ahead and move that out of the way for a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and take our bracket and slide it up and over our hitch. We'll then take the provided hose clamp. We'll go through the bracket around the, the hitch itself. Then come back in through. Or we'll tighten down the hose clamp securing the bracket to the hitch. We'll go ahead and take a pair of tin snips and trim off any excess hose clamp. Next we're going to go ahead and need to connect the four flat wiring off the back of the seven and four way plug to the four flat wiring already installed on the vehicle. Before we do this we'll add a little bit of dielectric grease which is part number 11755. Go ahead and plug the connection together now. We'll then go ahead and add a zip tie to make sure that the connector stays together. We can go ahead and trim off any excess zip tie. Next we're going to take the gray duplex wire that comes in the kit. We'll need to strip back a little bit of the gray covering. We'll then need to strip back a little bit of wire from both the black and the white wire. And we'll be connecting these two wires with the black and the blue wire with the butt connector already on them that come off the back of the seven and four way plug. The white wire will go to the blue wire and the black wire will go to the black wire like that. Go ahead and crimp bolt down. Now 
Now this black wire is what will go up to the positive side of the battery for your 12 volt hot and your seven way plug. And the blue wire connected here to the white wire is the electric brake signal wire. Now we can go ahead and tape up each of these two connections with a little electrical tape to help protect it from the elements. Now we still have two wires that come off the back side of the plug. One of them is a white wire that has a ring terminal on it that we'll need to ground somewhere to the frame of the vehicle using a self-tapping screw. The other wire is a purple wire that depending on your application can be tied in with the reverse light circuit and will be used for items such as a reverse lockout or similar. Now on this case we're not going to be hooking up this purple wire so we'll just tape it off for now. Now here on the back side of the plug, we're going to go ahead and trim down a piece of the half inch wire loom that comes with the kit and we'll slide it onto the wires just to give them a little more protection. We'll also use a little bit of electrical tape to make sure that the wire loom stays in place. Now we've gone ahead and bunched up our extra wire here. Just going to use a little bit of tape to help keep it in place for right now and we'll be using a few zip ties to help secure it off as well. Now we've gone ahead and routed our white wire with the ring terminal on it, which is our ground, around the hitch and over here to where we can get a good solid ground on the frame of the vehicle. We'll be using a self-tapping screw to ground our ground wire. Next we'll need to take our gray duplex wire, go ahead and pull all the slack through. We're gonna go ahead and Take our duplex wire now, and we'll route it up to the front of the vehicle, making sure we stay away from areas that may become hot, have moving parts, or sharp edges, as all of them can easily damage the wire. We'll also be using a few zip ties along the way to help secure our wire. Now we're going to take our razor knife and we're going to need to remove the gray covering from the rest of the wire as the white wire will be pulled into the cab of the vehicle and the black wire will route up to the battery. Next we're going to need to go inside the cab of the vehicle. Now we're going to go ahead and peel back the carpet a little bit here on the driver's side. We're going to need to trim out some of the plastic so we can gain access to the firewall. So take our razor knife to do that. Now with an area of the firewall exposed, we'll go ahead and take a smaller bit or a pilot bit, go ahead and drill a hole in order to route our, our wire through the firewall. We'll go ahead and open up our hole to match the size of our grommet. Now, when we drill a hole, we're going to then install a snap bushing grommet, which is part number SWC8057. Now, we'll go ahead and take our grommet and push it down into position. Then we'll need to go back underneath the vehicle and continue running our wires. We'll go ahead and pull our black wire up. Next we're going to need to find a location to mount two breakers. Right in here is a good spot to do it. We're going to need to trim a little bit of this rubber back. Just go ahead and take our razor knife and trim it back some. Now we're going to go ahead and we'll be attaching a 40 amp breaker, which is this one right here. And that's for the 12 volt power supply on our seven way plug. And we're gonna be using a 20 amp breaker, which is right here, for the power that goes to our brake controller. I will go ahead and take our 40 amp breaker and we'll be attaching it to the body right in this area.
Then we'll go ahead and attach our 20 amp circuit breaker. I will go ahead and trim our black wire here to length. We'll go ahead and connect it here to the bottom stud or the chrome color stud on our 40 amp breaker. Go ahead and trim the wire, strip a little wire back. We'll then be attaching one of the supplied smaller ring terminals to the wire here. We'll go ahead and take the nut and the washer loose. Go ahead and put the washer and the nut back on. Then go ahead and tighten down the nut. Now we're gonna make a jumper that runs from the copper side of our uh, circuit breaker over to the positive side of the battery. Go ahead and strip some wire. Add a small ring terminal to the one side. Go ahead and connect it to our circuit breaker so we get the right length. Go ahead and open up the battery side. Go ahead and trim our wire to length. Strip some wire back. Go ahead then and add a larger ring terminal to the end of the wire. Crimp it down. Now we're not going to actually connect it quite yet till we finish the rest of the wiring. Now we'll go ahead and take another section of the black wire. And if it's long enough, you can run from the 20 amp chrome or silver color stud down into the cab of the vehicle through that grommet for the power for the brake controller. If it's not quite long enough, go ahead and use it to make your jumper from the copper side over to your positive side of the battery. And you'll need to get an additional length of wire to go from here into the cab of the vehicle. Go ahead and strip back a little bit of the one end. We'll add a small ring terminal to it. Crimp it down. Now our piece of wire is long enough, so we're going to go ahead and connect it to the silver or the chrome side of our 20 amp breaker. Now we've gone ahead and gotten another short piece of wire here to make our final jumper. We'll connect a small ring terminal to the one end. Go the head then and connect it here to our copper side of our 20 amp breaker. Go ahead and trim it the length. Strip a little bit of wire back. And then we'll add a large ring terminal to this end. We'll leave these two off the positive side of the battery for now until we finish our other wiring. We'll then go ahead and take this length of wire, comes off the 20 amp circuit breaker. We'll feed it down. And in through the grommet, feeding it into the cab of the vehicle. Now before we go back out from underneath the car, we're gonna go ahead and trim off any excess zip tie that may be left over from routing our wire to the front of the vehicle. Next, we're going to need to remove a panel that's here up underneath the dash. To do that, we'll need to take this screw out here, as well as right there.
over here in this corner, if you pull, there's a little tab that holds this corner in place. Go ahead and set this piece out for now. Now, once we got the under panel removed, we were able to find this port right here. And this port actually has a brake signal off of it. We used our test light to find out which wire was the brake signal. And we found it to be the blue wire with the orange stripe. So now we know which wires will go to what. The blue wire with the orange stripe will go to the brake signal wire. Now next we're gonna to need to choose a location to mount our brake controller. We're gonna go ahead and choose to use the plastic pocket with the brake controller to mount it. We'll be mounting it here on the lower portion of the dash using the two supplied screws. And we'll begin by taking our black and our white wire and cutting them down a little bit. We don't need them quite so long. Go ahead and set that aside. We're then gonna to have to add a butt connector to each end. We'll need to strip a little bit of wire back. We'll then be connecting the blue wire off of the harness that comes with the brake controller to the white wire. So we'll be connecting these two together And we'll be connecting the black wire with the black wire here. Now the black wire here, this is the positive or the power lead. We'll then go ahead and strip a little more wire back here on our white wire. This is the ground. We'll be adding a ring terminal to the white wire so we can ground it underneath the dash here. Finally, our red wire will tie in with the blue wire with the orange stripe, as this is our brake signal wire. To do that, we'll just use a quick splice connector. Go ahead and take our quick splice connector, slide it over the blue wire with the orange stripe. We'll then take our red wire, slide it into position. Go ahead and crimp everything down. You can then go ahead and close the cover on it. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove this nut right here. We're going to add in the white wire with the ring terminal, which is the ground underneath it. Go ahead and put the nut back on and tighten it down. We'll go ahead and tape up these two butt connections. Next, we'll go ahead and take our wires, route it over here to the pocket, feed it up through, or we'll plug it into the back side of our brake controller. I'm going to make sure that you hear it click and lock into position. Then slide our brake controller back down. Next we'll go ahead and uncover the positive side of the battery. We're then going to go ahead and take both of our ring terminals that are on the end of the black wire and trim out the center section. So it'll look something like that. Go ahead and take this one out as well. And then we'll be loosening this nut right here and sliding both of the ring terminals underneath in line with this other existing wire. Go ahead and tighten it back down. Then we can put the cover back down. Next, we're going to go ahead and add some sealant to seal up the area around our grommet where our wires come through the firewall. To do that, we're going to be using some Loctite sealant, which is part number LT37467. Now, with our sealant in place, we can go ahead and take our wires, secure them using a zip tie or two.
Go ahead and trim off any excess zip tie. And then we can reinstall our panel. We can then go ahead and put our two screws back in to secure the panel. And that'll do it for our installation of the Takancha Prodigy P2 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90885 on our 2014 Ford Explorer. In conjunction with our universal installation kit for trailer brake controllers, part number ETBC7.